What is up everybody, welcome back to a new video and in today's video, uh, I wanted to do some sort of like a starter guide for CineSamples libraries. So if you're one of those people who picked up some CineSamples libraries recently, maybe you invested in the Native Instruments CineSamples sale, uh, you, you got a lot of these libraries at a very nice discount. Um, but you know, if you're just getting started in the CineSamples ecosystem in the first place and you're just kind of uh, wanting to find your way around these libraries, um, I hope this video can be some uh, help to you. And uh, so what I thought I would do for this video is kind of go through the way the libraries work, how I personally use them, and then some of my recommendations for, you know, my favorite patches and uh, my kind of go-to instruments on a daily basis when I, when I write music. So uh, let's get started right away with my favorite sketching tool, and that is Cine Piano. So this library up here, um, I finally have my, I mean, I have my uh, instrument loaded and it ships with four different presets for the, for the library. So the first one is the basic Cine Piano sound and it was uh, a Steinway piano located in the center of the MGM scoring stage. So you got this very uh, wide ambient, uh, nice, you know, sound um, and Tim Starnes mixed it um, and it sounds beautiful. So let's play a little bit and see what it sounds like. And you can just hear a little bit of the ambience there. Uh, now, when it comes to mic positions, um, these are all on the right. So this library actually doesn't come with um, a whole selection. Like it doesn't have way too many. Uh, some some libraries end up having like, you know, 16, 17, 20 mic microphone positions, but CineSamples libraries are relatively lightweight um, compared to some of the huge developers because um, those guys really invest in a lot, lot, lot of microphone positions. Um, set of samples kind of sticks with the core ones. So, you know, for this library, you get the full clue, uh, full close room and surround, and you can kind of choose, you know, different, uh, micro positions. So let's check out ambient for a second. Sorry, there's a little bit of repetition there because of the samples loading in, but you get a sense of, you know, now, now the piano sounds a little bit further away, but it still doesn't sound washy. It just sounds like the microphones were placed further away, which is kind of the effect you want, especially in an orchestral setting. So it's nice to have that tweakability there. So yeah, it's really cool because you can just press these buttons and then the mixer will automatically load in the correct mics for you. So for ambient, we have the room and the surround loaded up together and the room is just a notch down a little bit. So you can always tweak it to your own liking, which is nice. And yeah, the entire piano is about, you know, 264 uh, megabytes. So nothing, nothing too crazy there. This library is also cool because it comes with a bias forte and bias piano setting. So for bias piano, everything you play will end up sounding on the softer side. So it still responds to velocity, but it's nothing, uh, you know, it, it basically, it, it overall, it just is a little bit quieter. And then for bias forte, it's the opposite, so. So I personally like it on the linear setting myself. But yeah, that that is really uh, as simple as the library gets. So microphone positions um, yeah, on one page, a little bit of EQ, and then your settings you can kind of tweak around even more, but it's a simple library. Okay, then we have T uh, Tina Guo's Legato library, which is all the way down here. Um, this is volume one and recorded a while ago, but it's it still holds up to this day very, very well. And this is Tina Guo, the cellist, um, playing some beautiful legato lines. And so just have a listen to this. So beautiful sound, beautiful resonance of the room again. Again, it's in the MGM scoring stage. And <clears throat> you'll notice uh, that when I was holding that A, 
there was a loop point there where Tina basically rebowed the same note. So this is something you might not want all the time, and they actually addressed this in Volume 2, which I'll play now, but um, I, I would love to have this infinite bow feature where when you play a note, let's try that. So you hear how the note is continuing to hold and there's no rebow of the note. You don't hear the da da like the note restarting. I would love that as an update for Volume 1. I think that's the really the only thing that's missing um, from this library. So Volume 2 is, is kind of similar, but it, it basically fills in the rest of the cello uh, repertoire, in, in, you know, as, as you will. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they have a whole bunch of articulations, so let me just go to them here. So that was the arco, and that's, you know, legato. Now you notice when I played uh, Volume 2, it was a lot quieter than Volume 1. Uh, volume 1 is, in my opinion, the loudest in a samples library, actually. Um, and that's actually kind of a trademark of these libraries. So they were recorded at a relatively loud volume, um, or at least in post-processing, they were brought up a little bit to, to uh, make the out-of-the-box experience quite um, you know, upfront and in your face. So all the all the core Cine Symphony libraries uh, are you know, quite louder than a lot of the other companies. So what I end up doing is before I even start, I'll usually grab the the volume and drag it down to at least, you know, negative nine or 10 uh, up here in the contact instance. Um, of course, for the sake of this video, we're, we're only doing Cine samples libraries, so the volumes will be relatively consistent. But just a note, if you're working with other libraries from other developers like Orchestral Tools or Spitfire, <clears throat> you might find that the Cine samples libraries are uh, much louder out of the box. So. This is one of those instances where I just naturally tweak them. And actually, you'll see here Hollywood Winds, which we'll play next, um, is already pre-dragged for you at minus six. So the volume should be quieter. Uh, so, And the way the library is mapped out is really cool because um, these are your keys, the different keys down here, like C major, D major, and so on. Um, and here, let me go do it first. Where Hollywood Winds. So this is available for Contact Player, which is great because they have the NICNT patch that allows that to happen. So in scales and rips, I've pulled up major scales, but they also have harmonic minor scales, natural minor scales, octatonic, and so on. But for me, I usually stick with the major scales. So we have all uh, 12 keys, and then here are the different scale types. So you have um, two octaves up, one octave up, two octaves down, one octave down, two octaves up and down. Then it's still C major, but from dominant to dominant. So it's that instead of C to C, we now go from G to G. Just one octave up, two octaves down, one octave down, and then up and down. So it's basically two sets of scales, um, one starting from the tonic to tonic, and then the other one from dominant to dominant. Pretty cool. Um, and it, quite intuitive mapping as well. So if I wanted to change key, you simply choose one of the keys, which is at the bottom, and now you're in a different key. Now, one thing I would have loved um, in this library as an additional choice is uh, to be able to choose some of the octaves where the runs would start and end. Because, you know, especially for this B major scale, you hear how the piccolo adds in there at the very top. And sometimes you might not want the piccolo player playing that run. So an option to maybe uh, add or remove players would be also really, really cool. But of course, these performances are already baked in. So they'd have to record separate samples to address this. But um, I, I think that that would be really, really cool to kind of isolate certain players and, uh, and pick and choose there. But, you know, um, <clears throat> the reason I say this, I was just working on a project that... Um, that I wanted to use this B major run, but because of the piccolo player, it, it the high frequencies were a little too much. 
and it kind of disrupted the overall mix just a little bit. So I kind of wanted the option to take away the piccolo player. But that doesn't take away from the overall sound quality from the library. It's fantastic. This is actually, I think, the first Cine Samples library I ever purchased um, back then. So really, really cool. Then we have the 2T, so that's everyone playing. Really, really great for just um, ensemble, you know, uh, playing and uh, sketching purposes. And then you have the option to choose staccato as well. So that's, uh, so you have 2T staccato as well. So it brings in separate, uh, separate patch for staccato. Um, Unison Tremolos is one I also use quite a bit. So if we go to the patch there, um, this first octave is all whole step trills. So if I'm playing a C, it's trilling from C to D, play G, G to A, and then the octave above, uh, half step trills. And again, an option to kind of, kind of control the octave or the instruments to add in would be awesome because I use this B major trill, right? Or this, sorry, this B whole tone trill, but I also wanted to hear that octave above as well. So I had to actually manually bring in a piccolo from another library and then activate the, the whole tone trill in that library to do that, but yeah. All right, so Hollywood wins, uh, just I, I would say probably a staple in every cinematic composer's library. Um, just a lovely sound. So now we move to the core libraries and, um, or, or I should say the main Cine Symphony libraries. Now the standout features here are again, the Sony stage, beautiful sound, not too wet, not too dry, very John Williams sound. Uh, just, just lovely, honestly, just so gorgeous. Um, and you see that they are not, uh, automatically brought down to minus six. So you'll have to watch out for the volumes. Um, but the main thing to talk about about these libraries is the articulation mapping, which is quite unique to Cine samples, I think. So the way um, the Cine Symphony libraries work in terms of the articulations patches is that um, they there are basically three types of short notes. So uh, Michael Patty calls it the half note short, the quarter note short, and the eighth note short. You could also think of it as kind of a mercato, a staccato, and staccatissimo. Uh, in terms of the strings, you could say spiccato for the short note. Um, but basically, if you play very lightly by default, so I'm gonna play an F major chord very lightly, very messily, um, you basically activate the the shortest value, shortest note value. Um, so that's the kind of the staccatissimo. Then if I press a little harder, that's kind of the quarter note short, or you could say the, the basic staccato. And then when I press really hard, you get what's called like the half note short or the mercado. So if you want to switch around this, uh, the way of doing this, um, you can actually go into the mapping itself and um, fiddle with the actual range, you know? So if you want to activate the half note short uh, a little bit easier, you can always drag this back, right? And then, um, You'll, you'll get to activate that a little bit sooner. So uh, same with these other ones, which is kind of cool. And then for sustain, uh, at, in, at least in this patch, it's disabled. But if I press, if I use the pedal for it, uh, if I press pedal, then now, now I'm pressing the sustain pedal, everything will turn to sustains. Right? So now we get everything sustained. So you get both longs and shorts in one patch, which is awesome. And a lot of libraries have multi patches for this, but this one out of the box, it, it, you, don't, you don't really have to press any key switches or anything. Um, it's just all based on velocity and sustain pedal. So uh, I, 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 like I, you know, now I'm used to that workflow and it works really well. When I first started using the library, I was a little bit confused because you know, if I press lighter, I would think that it would get softer in terms of dynamics, but it actually made the note value even shorter. So the dynamics are actually controlled by mod wheel, both for shorts and the longs. Okay, so that's something to note as well. All right, um, let me just get a little more specific here with the flute. So um, again, we start, now I'm gonna bring the mod wheel down first so you can hear what the, the short notes sound like quiet. Bring it up. Right, so beautiful sound. And then legato with the sustain pedal down. Right, 
So I love that sound. And the Legato is really, you know, really good now um, with all the updates. So in terms of the Legato tweaking, you, you have this speed and intensity knob. Um, and what's great is that you can actually tweak the speed of the Legato and the intensity of Legato. So that's kind of like the volume. Um, so the transitions from one note to another, if you want them to be less pronounced, then you can turn it down and vice versa if you want them a bit louder. And then speed, of course, is the actual speed. Uh, now, one thing uh, these Cine Samples guys um, came up with before a lot of other developers is the poly legato. So that means you can actually play two notes at once. And then if you change those notes, both of them will activate legato transitions. So I'm playing an E and an A. Let me uh, click on this. E and A. I'm going to a G sharp and a C sharp. Wait, let me do that again, sorry. There we go. So the E transition to the G sharp with legato and the A transition to the C sharp with legato. The script is pretty smart that way. It detects um, where the notes are moving and then it automatically applies the transitions to those corresponding notes. This also works if you're holding two notes and you only want to change one note. So the A went to the C sharp while the E sustained there. So very, very cool. And uh, it's very practical, you know, very easy to use all using the sustain pedal. Uh, let's move on to the oboe. So we have um, the articulations. Yeah, so sometimes what I tend to do when, when just playing around is I'll accidentally activate the, um, the quarter note or the regular staccato rather than the staccatissimo, just because Sometimes when I want to play a little bit harder to get the note sounding louder, I you know naturally press harder, which activates that note value instead of making it louder, which you have to control with the mod wheel. But you can always remap this. Um, this is just the workflow I'm used to, so you know you're bound to tweak anyway at later. Uh, Monster Low Winds is pretty cool. Um, doesn't have too many articulations, so you know all the necessary ones, and they also have some squeaks and clusters. I did a review of this library. Um, I think it was. Uh, last year or two years ago. So this one sounds a little bit like this. So in terms of the volume of the staccatos and stuff, um, you can control them by both mod wheel and the velocity, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, by default, I love the Tim's mix. It just has this nice detail. Right? It, it almost is like just a regular tree mic that you would find in any other orchestral library, but it has a level of polish and, and crispiness that you don't usually find in a lot of other libraries. Um, cool, let's move on to Cine strings. So the mapping is again the same. Uh, you get three types of shorts. little bit harder. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm pressing kind of inconsistently here, but. So not as short, and then finally the hardest. Right? And then again with legato, you can um, press the sustain pedal down. So you can really hear the rosin and the the air in the hall passing through, which is which is really nice. Um, with poly legato again, and you, again you can play with the speed and the intensity there, which is nice. Um, moving on to the Sinistrings runs, uh, this is lovely. It comes with both the um, trill itself, oh, sorry, the runs mapped identically as Hollywood Winds Above. So that's awesome. 
So tonic to tonic and dominant to dominant. But in addition to that, we also have trills. So if we go over here, you can activate it with a yellow key switch as well to get the trill. They give you these, these uh, Lydian trills. <laughs> so beautiful. Um, and this question was asked a lot. Is it only recorded violins? I think it is only violins in this library because um, I don't, I can't find any like celli or anything. And uh, yeah, in terms of the recorded ranges, it, it's all quite high up. So uh, if we just go back to this runs, you hear that the lowest note we get is there is a middle C. So if you go to G major, it starts on the G above middle C. So that's even higher, you know? So there's no uh, no option to select other strings there. So I believe it's only violins. Okay, moving on to Cinebrass. So Cinebrass is basically Cinesample's uh, call to fame, really. Um, and it's like, if you've watched my other video with the brass comparison, it's basically my go-to library today. Um, and I love the trumpet ensemble articulations. I actually love all the articulation patches in this library, um, but So good. Um, and the legato. Nice. Uh, now, one thing about the Cinebras Core Library is that uh, the dynamic range is not too wide. So you'll get more of the fortissimo um, legato and stuff and sustains in the pro library. In the core library, they kind of give you the fundamental instruments you need. Um, but for example, in the horn solo true legato, the, the dynamic range basically goes up to about an MF. So just have a listen to this. Now I'm at the top of the mod wheel. Let's actually turn um, up the speed and the intensity down. You see the little two black dots on the speed intensity knob right there. Uh, they were kind of moving around as I was playing. So this is called their adaptive legato. And these are parameters adjust as you're playing, which is really, really nice. Uh, Monster Low Brass, you get some really short notes. Really, really nice. And then the uh, the sustains are something else. Let's see if I can do this here. So look, even contacts screaming for help. It's that loud. All right, <laughs> and then we have Sonore. So Sonore is their newest library. Um, and this, the, the trumpets here were taken from the 90s retro trumpets, uh, but they were re, kind of repolished and sound, sorry, sound very nice. Um, even better legato. And there I was at the top of the mod wheel. And again, you'll notice that this library doesn't really reach those searing fortissimos, uh, which it doesn't uh, attempt to do. This library is um, intended for uh, melodic lines and kind of nice, beautiful, soaring themes, you know? Uh, but nothing too over the top, like trailery or anything like that. So that's, that's, that's why it's so important for the legato in a library like this to be very good. Uh, which it is. So there, there's Cinebras Sonore. Uh, almost there. Uh, Cinebras Descant Horn, they released this after the Cinebras Corn uh, Pro, 
And this one has a lovely sound as well. Let me just bring up this instrument. Here we go. So first we have the articulations, they're kind of short. Okay, so I was just double checking. Um, the shorts are, like the dynamics of the shorts are controlled by Mod Wheel, and they only recorded uh, one note value for the shorts. So it's kind of like a regular staccato there. Um, but for me, the legato is where it stands out. So again, I'm pressing on the pedal. And that's the highest note of the descant horn right there. And it sounds gorgeous in the hall. Um, naturally, you won't want to write up there very much, but the option is there if you do need it. Um, and then we have Cineperk. So the library is very uh, comprehensive. Um, over, uh, It's basically 100 gigabytes, just under, I think. Um, but when you purchase it, you'll get all these folders, and um, you'll also get the legacy uh, way of mapping. So. This is kind of what I typically use from, so I pull up the core, I pull in timpani, bass drums, snares, cymbals, uh, tubular bells, and the glockenspiel sometimes. They all sound beautiful, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just sticking with the basic ensemble patch and it has a little bit of everything in there, so. So down here we have the tubular bells, snares up here. bass drum here, kind of a toms here, snare, got your like gong or like cymbals. <laughs> nice. So yeah, I mean, it's basically a lot of the core and uh, the core library crammed into one patch there. Uh, you know, again, great for sketching purposes. But you know, if you really want to go into it, you can you can just um, you know play around with all the different detailed instruments there. Uh, lots of round robins, lots of uh, different mallets, so hard, soft, and medium. So it's awesome. I use it a ton. It's my go-to percussion library. Uh, harp. So here we have the basic plucked harp. Now, Cine Harps actually comes with three different harps. So, three different harps to choose from if you want to pluck. But anyway. Again, the Tim's mix um, sounds awesome. By the way, I usually use the Tim's mix by default because I, I just love the way it, it sits in the mix and um, the, the amount of presence versus the amount of room ambience for me is just ideal. So yeah, um, another reason this library is awesome is the uh, recorded glissandi. Huge amount of detail, um, lots and lots of different options. <laughs> And then we have, um, so, okay. So basically here, your, your blue range is the playable range, right? So let me just play this first C. So it's just a regular one octave kind of, um, you know, run up on C major. And then your C, an octave above is going down. Then you have two octaves up in C major, two octaves down, right? So that's really, really cool. And you actually, you can actually go in and, and choose the different uh, keys or the scale types, and then you can choose short, medium, or long. So if I wanted long, then here's the run in C major. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you just go to town with this. It's, it's so good. So lovely. Um, harp ad lib. Here we go. Some extra extras here. go 
goes on. Uh, let's do another one. Ah, uh, why do you gotta do this to me? <laughs> okay, um, and let's check out some of these over here. So we have different scale types. Let's try out major pentatonic. In a land far away where there are dreams with unicorns. Right, you know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. You have so many options. And then the last library I use a lot from Cine Samples is not contact player uh, friendly, but it's it's awesome. And this is the Cine Orc library. So um, this one we use a lot, or I use a lot for low chords. So the library comes with um, four patches, low chords, 2D octaves, 2D uh, chords, 2D octaves, and bonus Vivaldi tremolo. So I use Vivaldi tremolo and low chords a lot, but just have a listen to this. So as you can hear, they are basically pre-orchestrated chords that serve a perfect function as like a bed in a composition. It just warms everything up very, very beautifully. Um, the best feature of this library is that it comes with this scripted legato so that um, when you're transitioning from one chord to another, the, the script actually joins those two together. So you don't really need to finesse any, um, you know, like make sure the, the first note cuts off at the perfect time and, you know, transitions well to the second one. The engine does that for you. So this is something I would love to see in Orchestral Tools Layers, uh, which has a very similar concept, pre-orchestrated chords, um, just playing one note to another. Right now, it's basically just sustains instead of legato. That would be awesome in, in some, a library like that. Um, so there we go. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. It gives you a little bit of an insight into the my favorite instruments from Cine Samples and um, kind of why I enjoy their libraries a lot. Uh, just a gorgeous sound. I, I think the Sony stage is kind of their, their calling point um, here. And just the playability is very interesting and very unique. Um, you know, they have their articulations patches, which gives you shorts and longs in one single patch. The dynamic range is relatively good. So, you know, you you do get really soft as well, but you also get the fortes for TCMOs in certain libraries as well. Um, you, you're, you're honestly the most covered if you have both core and pro, but I mean, you, you could do perfectly well with either Core or Pro, depending on which uh, orchestral section you're using. Um, but in general, the sound is awesome. Uh, Playability is great. Legato is a, a lot better than it was when it first started out. And um, and yeah, just, I mean, the sound quality is, is basically what stands out to me the most. So yeah, love Santa Temples. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. Um, hope you uh, enjoyed this video. And uh, if you're starting out with sample stuff, um, you know, definitely ask any questions in the comments below if you if you're curious. Um, and just before I go, I want to give you my uh, cin um, sorry my cinematic orchestral libraries recommendations list, uh, which you'll find in the description box below. It's totally free for you. But if you're kind of on the market for some sample libraries and you're not really sure where to start and the different price ranges and you know which companies are good and all that stuff. Um, I created an entirely free uh, PDF guide for you to follow along and just uh, help you along with your research. So download that if you if you don't have it yet. I hope it helps you. It certainly uh, was something I, I wish I had when I was starting out, you know, to navigate the sea of libraries out there. Uh, but in any case, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you in the next video and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.